In February, Chicago voted for a new mayor. However, there wasn't a winner. Instead, we whittled our way down to two candidates from the 14 that were on the ballot, and we had to vote again. This seems incredibly inefficient and made me wonder, has it always been this way? Of course it hasn't. And to my surprise, there was one country that changed the way Americans vote. And that was none other than Australia. The way you vote has changed dramatically since the earliest elections that happened in the country. Back in old Massachusetts, the earliest voting was done at the town hall by a show of hands. And as you can imagine, you had a really good idea of how people voted. In Illinois, the via vos method was used. Each person would go before a judge and vocally announce who they voted for. Again, there was little to no privacy on how a person would vote. The rationale at the time was that the voter, white men, stood by their choice and only a meek and feeble man would try to conceal their vote. How each city voted was largely informed by the state laws, and in 1848, the Illinois Constitution enacted that all voting in the state had to be done by ballot. Ballot voting soon became the standard across the country, although it was far from the ballot voting you know today. Early ballot voting required the voter to write his choice on a piece of paper, both legibly and correctly, a challenge even by today's standards. Eventually, political parties furnished tickets to the voters, delivered in person or by the mail, the printed ballot featured all the candidates the political party wanted you to vote for. To vote, you would fold and take this ticket to the judge at the polling location, and the ticket was deposited in the ballot box. It was an improvement, however one that was far from perfect. The biggest problem was with the buying and selling of votes, which was largely successful because it was still obvious how you voted, and that was to do with who printed the tickets. The tickets were printed in multiple colours with intricate designs to distinguish a party vote. Sure, laws were enacted to counter these efforts, such as you could only use white paper, but that resulted in tickets being printed in a variety of white shades. Selling your vote wasn't hard. There were even reports of voters shopping around for the best price. Bribes ranged from a couple of cents to a few dollars. Hell, even a free beer or a hot meal was enough. The system needed reform, and they found it in Australia. During the 1850s, a new way of voting was introduced in Australia, and it brought four major reforms to ballot voting. Firstly, ballots would be officially printed by the overseeing government body at the taxpayer's expense. Secondly, the names of all the candidates and their parties would be listed alphabetically on the ballot. Thirdly, the ballot would be only distributed at the place of voting, and finally, voters would take their ballots into a private booth to mark them in secret. The Australian ballot system, known as the secret ballot, was first enacted in the city of Louisville, Kentucky in 1888. In just one year, seven states had enacted reform laws based on the Australian ballot. Illinois would adopt the system in 1891, and if you're voting in Chicago's 21st Ward election in 1893, this would have been your ballot. You could vote the party ticket by marking within the circle, or within a square next to the candidate's name. Also featured on the ballot were two propositions for the annexation of Rogers Park and West Ridge. Overall, the reforms proved successful. The business of buying and selling votes dried up as there was no certainty how a person voted, and those participating in the act weren't that trustworthy to begin with. Getting on the ticket was still partisan, with primary sold in Chicago for both mayors and aldermen. Under the Australian ballot law, a candidate that wasn't nominated by a party could get on the ballot by gathering enough signatures. This was usually a small percentage of the last vote, and it varied from state to state. It wouldn't be until 1923 when Chicago made automatic elections nonpartisan under a majority election system. If no candidate gets more than 50% of the vote, the top two candidates would have a runoff. The 1923 automatic election resulted in 20 runoff elections. Mayoral elections became nonpartisan in 1995, however, it wasn't until 2015 when we had our first ever runoff, and we did it again this year. It's hard enough to get people to vote once. With the low voter turnout and a record number of candidates running, there has to be a better way. I think there is, and some others do too. Again, we have to take a look at voting in Australia. Back in 1917, Australia switched to a ranked preferential voting system, where, depending on the election, you have to number each candidate or a political party from your first to last preference. If no candidate has enough votes, the candidate with the least amount of votes is removed and their second preferences are distributed, and so on. If you want to learn more about this, there is a link to a CPG Grey video in the description. Now this way of voting has already made it to America. It has been adopted in Maine and San Francisco. One great example is in 2013, ranked voting was used in the Minneapolis mayoral election, where 35 candidates were running. 
and with ranked voting, there was no need for a runoff, even though no candidate achieved the majority with the first round of preferences. The way we vote in Australia has largely remained the same, with voters marking paper ballots. In America, there was the introduction of machine voting, punch ballots, and computer voting, which has brought about issues with hanging chads, computer hacking, and machine manipulation. Chicago wasn't exempt for voter fraud even with the introduction of the Australian ballot system. I wanted to create a video about how people voted, but I would love to create a video solely on Chicago election shenanigans. So if you have any good stories or suggestions, hit me up in the comments below. Also, should Chicago and the rest of the country adopt a ranked voting system and switch back to paper ballots? I believe they should. That said, I can't vote here as I'm not a citizen, yet. Here's hoping you'll be happy to have me. Don't forget to like and subscribe and share this video with your Chicago friends.